works by Botticelli, his studio, and his contemporaries are on show in Frankfurt. So much brilliance and beauty in one place is breathtaking. Botticelli has come to Frankfurt. I look for my favorite picture, the birth of Venus. This is the first time that so many of the Renaissance painter's works have been gathered together in one museum. Then I spot it. Reserved. It's sad somehow. It's as if she's trying to hide. Despite the fact that she's naked, she seems shy and inviolable. Contemplative. It has a strange allure. I can't explain it. <laughs> the director of the Städel Museum, Max Hollein, was the moving force behind the exhibition. It took great diplomatic skill to persuade institutions in Europe and the United States to lend him these works. It was clear that none of these institutions would be willing to lend if the others refused. Of course, it's rather problematic because you need someone to say yes. That means in the negotiations you have to continually indicate that the others will probably all lend their works. This panel from Dresden shows the Florentine bishop Zenobius performing three miracles. Hollein had to strike a special deal to secure this work. The Städel Museum agreed to pay for its conservation. Botticelli's Annunciation normally hangs in the Uffizi Gallery. The painting was transported from Florence to Frankfurt under police guard. This trip was an absolute exception. This work didn't have to travel far. It is part of the Städel Museum's permanent collection. The female figure's similarity with Botticelli's Venus is striking. It's a midway between an idealized portrait and the depiction of a real person, Simonetta Vespucci. Florence's most renowned beauty and knight's lady to Giuliano de' Medici. The Medici family, the banking dynasty, liked to celebrate itself. Here their ancestors are preserved for posterity in the guise of the three kings. The Medici made Botticelli rich and forgave him for including himself in the picture. The Medici family ruled over Florence like dictators. And an artist like Botticelli was also important for the Medici because he didn't only play a part in demonstrating the family's power, but also cementing its power. It is about developing a program of art for them and depicting this splendor as a sign of influence and thirst for power. Some people still like to surround themselves with symbols of power and objects of beauty. Some of these pictures are in the hands of private collectors. It's hard to imagine having a Botticelli hanging in your living room. Of course, with these private owners, it just depends. One of them has the picture on permanent loan to the National Gallery in Washington, but another one of them actually had it hanging on his wall at home. Minerva and the Centaur, also on loan from the Uffizi, has proved a real hit with visitors. This mythological image is particularly enigmatic. Is the goddess of war seducing the creature? Or vanquishing it? I think she knows exactly what she's got in mind for the Centaur. He will subjugate himself to her and be led around by her. He will be tamed, and that is the worst thing that can happen to a wild centaur. Myth meets reality. Diamond rings were one of the symbols used by the powerful Medici family. Is this a coded threat? Botticelli's figures remain mysterious, and that ultimately accounts for their fascination.